Welcome back to my Minecraft mod notebook. This is Industrial Optimization Part 4. And this time we will be covering resource generation and transport. It is currently the 3rd of December 2013, and this is focusing on Minecraft version 1.6.4. So, mining, it's in the title. Uh, with tech mods, you've got several options. Uh, Buildcraft has quarries, uh, IC2 has its UU matter mechanic and miners, uh, Railcraft and Steve Carts both have tunnel bore machines, uh, Mine Factory Re Reloaded has its laser drills, uh, the Red Power uh, mods uh, have frame quarries, I'm pretty sure someone by this point has a uh, force field quarrying contraption so it's not like there's a lack of options, uh, simply a matter of whatever mods you're using probably has something that'll get you materials. Uh, however, there are two types. Uh, you have resource collection and resource generation. Uh, resource collection is any sort of an automatic miner that will pull, uh, that will physically pull resources from the map and stick it in a chest. Uh, this is mine cart, uh, miner carts, your quarries, uh, your chunk buster, frame contraptions, uh, anything like that. Uh, resource generation is pretty much anything that follows the formula of power uh, plus an optional scrap equals resources. Uh, this is your U matter mechanic and your laser drills. So, uh, resource collection, it's probably and usually a lot faster. Um, you've got a relatively low material investment, uh, Greg Tech of course being the usual uh, exception. Uh, it does also tend to be a relatively low power requirement, uh, although you are going to need well, lower, lower power per tick and uh, available earlier. earlier. Uh, it is also usually seen as a more legitimate method of mining. Uh, there are of course some drawbacks. It does leave uh, rather nasty holes in the world. Uh, ways around this of course to uh, put a big uh, put a big hole in the world and then make that your base. Uh, but even with that uh, you're either going to need to reset the chunks or find new ones. Uh, the chunk, bur chunk busters especially have a uh, very nasty potential to uh, just absolutely slam the server with uh, read-write requests. So if you have a 128 high uh, section of mining that you're doing uh, times your standard chunk and you're cycling it every three seconds, it's a 682 block uh, actions per second. So run run one of those, your server's probably going to be fine. On your third or fourth, your server's probably going to be feeling it. Uh, this does not include the backend uh, support power generation and any sort of resource processing, but that's uh, that sort of calculations counted for both systems. So, uh, resource generation uh, usually can be a lot slower and there is potentially a rather sizable material investment uh, just for your generators. Uh, that's not including any sort of, well, the, uh, the material investment is for both the resource generators and the power. Uh, again, not counting for Greg Tech, as that uh, Greg Tech does tend to just muck up everything and make everything uh, several times more expensive. Uh, it does t also tend to have a very high power requirement, uh, either for uh, outright generation or uh, per piece. Uh, the current state of uh, the matter fabs to produce the EU matter is uh, 10 million by default. So 10 million EU, not counting for the scrap uh, discount uh, per bucket, and then several buckets of that per uh, item that you're duplicating. Uh, the MFR laser drills are significantly less expensive. Uh, those can simply be trickle charged, uh, but 
they do have a random uh, random aspect to whatever they're going to be producing so it might take you several uh, several cycles to get the material that you're after and then even then it's only going to be a single block uh, often also these uh, resource generators are seen as more cheaty um, as you're effectively pulling materials out of thin air however uh, you don't have any world holes so within uh, most reasonable expectations you're not going to have any sort of uh, block uh, block information transfer to the server. Uh, unfortunately, higher power requirement means more generators, which means more taking tile entities, so that is a downside. Um, especially for the IC2U cycle, uh, it needs some sort of a scrap type of an item, uh, either as an outright fuel source or as a uh, cost reducer. Uh, often this needs to be generated uh, to have any sort of actual uh, usable effect and uh, that can produce uh, additional issues uh, this also tends to be slower uh, the upside of this uh, slower speed is that the load is spread over more time so any sort of server performance issues are uh, less visible and most of the time or all of the time uh, there aren't going to be any junk items so if you figure that roughly 90% of the uh, quarry that you're going to plop down is going to return uh, dirt cobblestone or uh, gravel then 90% less uh, of 90% less material transiting uh, again not going to be a bad thing so, uh, once we've mined up the materials, we need to get them from point A, which is our quarry, to point B, which is our material processing facility. Um, there are, again, two options for this. Uh, your pipe option, uh, build craft, or uh, the red power equivalent, or your solid state type of uh, transportation. Uh, this is the applied energistics or inner chest option. Uh, the Billcraft option, it tends to quote unquote look cool and a lot of people find it kind of relaxing to just watch watch materials go zipping around through their base. Uh, the upside is you can sort of see what you've got coming in. Uh, easy to just kind of say, oh hey I've got dirt and dirt and dirt and dirt, something's probably wrong if I'm just getting that much dirt. Uh, and that way it is sort of realistic. Uh, unfortunately, major downsides, you've got uh, all those items are probably going to be counted as uh, entities. So even going a couple of blocks from generation storage, uh, if your generation is going at a rather respectable rush or whatever, uh, you're probably going to have a, maybe a hundred or so entities fl uh, flying through the pipes. Uh, if these pipes are set up or configured incorrectly, uh, it's very possible for them to simply spill, and that's going to cause all sorts of issues, uh, namely server lag from having potentially thousands of blocks on uh, just sitting on the ground. And the network has to physically transport the items, so that's uh, another uh, network that needs to be calculated. Uh, the solid state option. Uh, basically converts the item to energy or sends it through some alternate dimension or whatever um, so it goes from uh, it goes from creation to storage instantly or with maybe a single step uh, as a temporary buffer uh, the upside though is that it's very very fast uh, short of any sort of power required to maintain the system uh, the system's almost impossible to mess up and the network only has to check if the ends are connected so if you have an AE system in your base and a quarry out in the middle of nowhere mining up resources um, an inner chest only has to check uh, or the system rather only has to check hey is there something in this inner chest and the quarry only has to say okay put this stuff in the inner chest so 
very, very, very short uh, networks are possible with this. And uh, if you recall back to my uh, seven step way, uh, seven step process to crush a server, uh, the same effect can be seen comparing logistics pipes to AE crafting. Uh, in my 125 world, I did have a two chunk square uh, logistics pipes auto crafting network. Uh, every time the network would update, I could see a very visible spike in my performance monitor and every time I changed said um, said update speed the uh, large spike would follow with it so uh, large logistics pipe network was pretty much to blame for me losing that world um, so the logistics pipes need to find the recipe uh, to find any precursors find the materials calculate the routing path move the items again as entities craft the items and move the finished products again as entities to the next step so lots of moving uh, path calculating lots and lots and lots of process for the server uh, the applied energistics uh, kind of solid state option it just needs to find the recipes uh, find any sort of precursor materials make sure it's got everything and it's done so uh, again, large logistics pipes, networks, you're going to notice the ticking when it updates. Uh, although the ticking might have been removed as the... Uh, I have not since done a significant uh, logistics pipes network, logistic pipe network to do uh, visible uh, server tick spikes. So with that in mind, uh, if you're given the option you're always going to want to go with a solid state uh, version of crafting or transport. So, uh, ender tanks instead of pipes, power teleportation option instead of running long wires. Uh, all in all, it might be slightly, uh, slightly heavier server load uh, with the inputs and outputs from the ender chest, but all in all, it's probably going to be a lot less than actually having to do the pipe calculations. So uh, that will wrap up the wrap up this chapter. Uh, just as a uh, an aside, uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. So uh, until next time, think big.